What's up, YouTube? Changing gears today. Um, I'm going to share with you a little project I've been working on. I've been a um, model builder for a long time. And um, ever since these Monaco and B body cars came out, uh, basically this past year with Greenlight, um, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with them. I've been collecting them. I love them. It's one of my favorite cars of all time. Uh, it's kind of a, I mean, on, on paper, the cars are boring, pretty boring, but I don't know. They're just, grew up watching them on television so much that uh, I've grown a very uh, good fondness of them. And having them in a large scale 118th is a lot of fun. But uh, this isn't a $100 car. It's more like a $60 car. And $60 used to be a lot of money for 118th scale, but now you know if uh with all the technology and all the super detailing that they've been doing to 118 scale past 10 15 years you know these cars now you can buy and i'm talking about you know 300 ones they're uh they have everything that the real car does with the same materials i mean they have accurate working suspension and steering systems i mean you can take the wheels off with like threaded nuts um some parts are magnetized like hubcaps so you can like knock them off and stuff with a little tool so you know those type of cars they're kind of crazy uh but yeah that's where the the detail is gone but now green light they've kind of made like kind of like a a car and if you've done kits before it almost feels like a snap kit basically the way it's constructed the amount of parts that go on this car not that many um really uh but it is heavy die cast but what we're going to start with, I just want to show you where the car is, how you get it from green light, and some of the things that can be improved upon with very little work. Um, I kind of got like basically out one I've never touched in terms of improving it in any way. So this is basically how they come from green light. The only thing I did on this one was set the tires on the rim, meaning that they're loose from the factory they can slide kind of around on the rim they're the same size of the rim they're just they fit loose and actually they're a little bit wider than the wheel itself well on this one what meaning what i do is i'll take a, a thin uh glue mostly like a like a, a super glue the thin kind that runs and once i set the tire to where i want it on the wheel you know out a little bit I run a little bit of a small bead in there and it sets the tire on the rim and won't move. And that way, when you're looking at the tire from the outside, it'll sit on the rim a little bit better instead of off to the inside or out too far. So I've kind of changed it up a little bit how I set the tires on the rim now on these cars. Uh, I've gone to a little bit further out just to make it look like it's a little bit more dished. Because you can come out just a slight more, maybe only like a millimeter out more where the bead sits. And it looks a little bit better. But this is how I did it the first round. And I think it looks alright. The other thing that this car can do is I'll set the axle. And this car hasn't had its axle set. So really, like I said, this I'm just trying to illustrate that I really haven't done anything in this car. And that's what it looks like. Some of the things that bothered me on the car um, were... Once you get to look at the car in actuality, this sits a little bit too far inside the fender, the way the wheel is. So it kind of gives it the wrong appearance when you're looking at it. If you look at it from above, it's kind of inset too much. So to correct that, they do give you a long enough axle. So people are kind of asking, you know, how do you do this? So I'm going to kind of make this video to show people, you know, what I do. I know these cars are collectible. This one I'm not going to touch because I'm going to leave it alone. But most of the other ones I've, I've, I've fixed it. So you take the car around. These actually come off the axle. And what, what I do is you can just kind of spin them. And they'll open up. They're a little tight at first, but they don't glue them. And they don't use a really hard axle in terms of... Uh, the finish right here so it's not going to be real rough so they come off we got you know polished actually so what you do is you kind of get it set to where you want basically you'll take the axle out from both wheels and you'll be able to spread them evenly so not one side's out pulled much than the other and then when you get it turned around then you're able to set the 
backspacing on the car. And you can see, basically you play with that and then you'll make a, um, basically you'll mark where it is and it'll be even on either side. And then you can take a piece of sheet plastic and make a spacer that goes on the axle. So what that is, is like on this car, I've done it. And I figured out that the gauge I use on it is the thickest sheet plastic I have. And I stack two of them, drill a hole, and there's my little spacer. And you can even that out. I haven't done it. And then paint it black so you don't even notice it's there. But that's what they look like. So you just cut them out with a knife, drill a hole. And uh, now the back spacing is more accurate looking. So on this car, I've also pulled the wheels out a little bit further. Or the tires, I mean. So it looks a little bit better when you're looking at the car from a distance. Because, well, yes, the wheels did sit inside the, the fender as much more than today's cars would. There's a certain extent where you can't have it too far in. And then it'll look, look more like a toy. And, of course, if it's too far out, that'll make a difference, too. So having it just right makes the car look a lot better. I would say this is my first kind of attempt at playing with one was this white car by taking off the decals and uh, kind of cleaning it up. The other thing I did was on the hazard car the interior is like really yellow so what I did with this one was try to get a more accurate paint tone and on the one we're going to go over next is the one I'm working on now, the custom. I'm going to do the paint detail the car and I'll show you where I am in the process on that kind of middle way through it but I wanted to kind of stop the process now so you could see where I'm at instead of doing like a video and then probably make another one when the car is completed but on this one I took the whole interior out of it and I painted it a little bit better so a little bit more appropriate color this is more of a sand because they had a kind of a light tan on these cars and then they had a, a darker dash which I didn't do I did the steering wheel darker but really the dash should be dark as well and um, I actually have some um, parts out from the other car that we can share with you in a minute. Um, but they just come apart pretty easily. You're going to have four screws or six screws on the bottom of the car. It goes on the perimeter and all of them are the same from the 75 Fury, the Monaco, the 77 Fury. They're all the same construction. You pull the screws out, car comes apart. It's pretty simple. I mean it's not difficult. They really don't glue it down or anything. But what you get after that is this. <laughs> you get this piece. And that's what the car looks like when it's apart. Pretty simple, right? That just sits on the body. So you get that, and then you get a chassis pan and all that. What we'll do is I'm going to show you the improvements I'm going to make on the... I would call it... Even though it's Project 77 Monaco, this is kind of like a stage three detailing process where this one was just paint and some detail. This one's getting, I, I completely took the paint off the car uh, to bare metal with, with chemical stripper that you've probably seen on other channels. So I bare metal the car uh, and then I did a primer and then a, a top coat of paint and now it's um, getting its detailing done before I coat it with clear. So you're going to see the car right now in a paint format. But what I'm doing right now is just showing you, and you can fast forward this. But I'm going to take the car apart right now. And this one anyway, so you could see the difference. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to be detailing the interior more to a more accurate setup. Even though these cars are supposed to be representative of police vehicles, and they're supposed to have... Um, police package. The way Greenlight does it is they have more of a civilian interior setup where they have the um, seats, they're kind of uh, they have pleating on them and they're, you know 77, 78 cars if you're doing this fleet style vehicle you're gonna have more of a simple interior and again just comes right off lifts right, right off and then you get three screws here and then the interior comes out and I'll show you how so the interior base comes out right 
Now the trick to it is, and this might be a tutorial for people who want to customize this car, you know, if you're afraid to get into it. I did all the uh, inspecting for you. Take those boys out there, just like that, and the chassis paint will come out. And you can see the original color on this underneath where it was kind of sprayed, because Greenland will spray it. It's black plastic that they spray, although the seats are... Um, rubber which is funny okay so it's gonna be tight right you got a tab here and here that come off the main casting and what happens with that is you gotta open the doors up and if you look inside it goes into the seat but the seats rubber so what you do is you take the car on end kinda of like this and you're gonna squeeze it and then it just comes out so you gotta squeeze the rubber seat it really is a piece of rubber and it just comes out like that now before because you're going to want to rip it right out green light attaches the radio you can see you can see it there the radio wire which is it really is literally a wire a they coil um they attach it to the dashboard dashboard is still screwed to the basically where the firewall would be there's no firewall in this casting but <clears throat> so what you do is you lift this slightly and move it back just like a I don't know a half inch let it rest so you're not stressing that cable and then you take those two screws out then you take both of them out as an assembly pretty simple so we're gonna do that and the other reason I'm doing this is just so you can see I'm not gonna do it on this car well actually I can because it has been a completely apart I'll show you to take the bumpers off and headlights and all that um, and I'll talk about the other stuff which I did to the other one because obviously you're going to want to remove the windows and not mask them when you really strip this car if you want to do that the reason I say so I know they're expensive I did get lucky with these cars in terms of I had a couple of ones I was I am lucky enough to live by Greenlight their company and it comes right out and I was able to get some demo cars that they had out of package they're real cheap so they were kind of damaged but they were complete so it was perfect for a custom um, to experiment with it and then if I like it I might buy some more to do and you never know these can go on sale you know maybe the ugly ones that don't sell might go on sale so you're gonna have the body and we'll look at that in a minute comes right apart and then this is the interior so what I did to this interior is just paint it I just detail paint it painted it and that's it um, I didn't take the seats off the floor pan Although you can and I did it on the other one and I'll show you the reason why you'd want to do that This is kind of just like the quick version So again this Dashboard really should be the color of that steering wheel and then I left the stickers so you could see <laughs> Look at the stickers so they do stickers for the speedometer and the gauge cluster there I think those are idiot lights and then you got like a control there I think one of either one of these was the radio one was climate control I can't remember so anyway there you go and then vent and that's all vent so you said okay there's a pla there's a sticker on this so you can take it off what I did when I painted this was I I did take those off and to paint it to put them back on but what I found was underneath all that is actual uh, molded detail so I have the dashboard I'm working on now and you can see it's a little bit better brown all that is what's under the sticker right now I painted it flat black it's gonna get a little bit better there's some glue left there so I'm gonna kinda get that I took the steering column off because you know I can't get a brush there real good anyway but you can see what happens is I have these stickers on my bench right now and they're just kinda sitting there you put them on parchment paper if you want so you don't ruin what's left of the sticking material and they actually come off pretty good but what you can do is you can take your scissors and cut those gauges out of the sticker even this stuff if you want to get crazy and piece this back together so you have full speedometer detail with the correct relief and an old trick is if you want to rep replicate a clear lens over those gauges is you take some clear and they sell clear in a jar with a brush and kind of dip the brush in there and kind of layer 
um, clear on top of it and it'll look kind of more shiny and it'll kind of look like a lens I mean if you want to go that far but I was really surprised so I was kind of cool that was really cool you can see the vents are molded in and everything like that I still got to clean this up this is not the final coat but I was playing with it well, and this is all water-based acrylic um, I either use this this is the color of the interior sand kind of replicates that light Chrysler acrylic you can you know do it with basically water wash up or Tamiya and they're good too and that's the brown I'm using for the wood grain and then I got another brown for like the darker okay so there's that I was kind of excited about that so that's gonna go together good and we'll look at that you know once it's done the other thing that's kind of stupid is the size of the the the, two, <laughs> the microphone there or the you know for your radio that is too small and this actually is kind of silly looking but if and I'll go get it on my bench You can play with that wire and actually get it to look more accurate. Right now, I'm working on the one right now that came from the, the custom car. Basically, you can work that wire and, and coil it up, and it looks a lot better. And what I'm going to do is really these cars, they hung them either here, down there. They used to have like a, a rack down there. They'd, they wouldn't really hang them up in this area here. You know, at the very least, they'd probably put it over here. But... Uh, so that's you know that comes off but for this car I just kind of did it quickly so what you'll do is you'll take that off kind of hang that up but again coil it tight and it'll look a lot better the other thing I wanted to address in this car was the fact that their steering wheel is kind of flattened um, when you look at these Chrysler wheels and they did these for a long time this part is gonna be straight with the wheel meaning that you know it won't curve back or anything but this part green light stood straight up <laughs> and it's really supposed to be this is the part of the steering wheel that kind of tilts back into that area you look at it here it's all flat right there's actually nothing behind that steering wheel it looks very poorly done even though they tried so like obviously you look at it this way it looks good this way not so much and when you're looking through the windshield of the car it's going to be, you know, not very good. So what I'm working on right now is a new steering wheel. This is the steering wheel of the other car. And I took some modeler's putty. And I kind of gave it some three dimension. So even though this is supposed to be back. And really, if you wanted to correct that for real. And I probably might do this on another car, you know, in the future. But you can take a blade, score this along there. And that'll tilt back slightly, and that'll look a little bit more realistic. And then you can go ahead and putty it in the back and everything and make it even. But right now, I think that'll look okay. I'm going to fill in the holes still, but I wanted to paint it to see how that would do. And I think that looks a lot better. You know, at least it'll be something. <laughs> the other thing, what I'm going to do is this one, since I didn't separate the steering column, I had to do this with paint brushes with the chrome paint not the best so what I'll do on this one is I have the steering column divorced from the everything and, uh, I'm gonna go through it and, and, and do it right but you know the green light did do the column shifter very well when you look at it so I like that I mean that's cool so the third thing on this interior um, is these seats again these are more of a civilian seat they even have the it's almost like the brome package because you know this part right here is is you know like the chrome tufts I really didn't see this interior you did see this when I was looking at these cars I kind of thought well what did they do this split bench like this well they did what but the difference is that this came lower on this molding really it's straight across it does separate from this seat obviously but and they did have armrest but what I'm gonna do is I have the seats now and I've been filling them with putty these are rubber so these are getting a putty treatment. I'm going to sand the smooth so you don't see any of the pleats. Then this is going to be two-tone because they do the piping. So this is slightly lighter color than this part here because this would have been like a, a fabric and this more of a vinyl down there. And this is going to come across and then go that way. So that can all be molded with putty 
you can get Marler's putty, you know, whatever one, you know, you see on the shelf, give it a shot. Some work better than others. And the same thing with the back seat. Back seat's really not supposed to have that kind of trim on it. So, you know. So I'm going to fix all that. That's all going to get puttied up. That's going to look more like a, a, a fleet interior. And the other thing, I did paint this because, you know, they could have carpet, but most likely not. What's happening is I have the seats taken out of the pan. So this is what it looks like. And again, this is the stock color that Greenlight does. Really bad kind of browns. I don't, it's very odd. But seat pan, I'm going to clean this up, sandpaper, all that, and then this is going to get uh, a spray painted black, and because they did have, you know, rubber floors, they did that back then, so that's going to be black, firewall, and then up to package shelf, so this is all going to be black in there, <coughs> and uh, it'll look a lot better. Of course, you can get the door panels out, I did that with chrome paint, this is going to get foil, so I'm going to show you the, the stuff I'm doing on the body right now, but so this is the stock door panels. This is the one off the doors that open, not the back. And then I got some back panels. They just snap in. So you got it like this. Basically it builds up off the floor. This all comes out. They do glue it in, but if you get yourself a small flat bladed screwdriver, you just got to work these edges where the glue seams are and take this as a pattern. This is basically where they lay the glue and just kind of work it. It is flexible. Again, this is rubber. This is all rubber. Or vinyl. I mean, it could be that. But anyway, this can go on there. It's flexible. So you just got to work it. Break the seal. Glue will come out. Same thing with this. Just be careful. Push from the back of the tabs. They just glue it in like that. There you go. So, not hard. Same thing with the pedals. It took the pedals off. They're all kind of crooked. A lot of times, Greenland would take it off. They'll leave flashing on the the parts, the parts will go into the whatever hole and they get all crooked because the flashing hasn't been removed. Well, same thing with that. It was all crooked. So easy fixes, easy, easy fixes. Diving into one of these is, is almost like doing a model kit just in reverse. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's like a snap kit. I was like, there can't be more than 25 parts on this car. <laughs> the other thing I learned about it, uh, playing with these things is these hubcaps come off. And this is the chassis for the custom one. Um, these, again, if you put a small flat blade behind that, it'll pop off. we got to be careful because you'll mar it. So just be careful with it. Because I'm debating whether to paint the wheels body color or just leave them black. I'm probably going to leave them black because painting body color, you know, going back to black, going back and forth and this and that. You can't really strip these too much because it is plastic. So you can't just throw a paint stripper on those. Funny is it, even though it's black plastic, Greenlight does paint these gloss black even though it's you know plastic so they don't leave it plain so kind of the interior rundown kind of the stuff I'm going to be doing for the chassis and stuff like that so we're going to get to the body um, so this is the body I came up with I'm using uh, this believe it or not <laughs> it looks a little bit lighter on the cap but when I saw it in the store I was like that's the 70s color I'm looking for at least in my brain so I did a test shot I liked it I put it on the car I'm just gonna lay the body on the on this chassis just so we can take a look at it so that's that what do they call it here it is uh, pure gold pure gold even though it says all in one I did a lay down primer I did coat it this is the second coat of paint I did sand it in between so I did I did body prep bare metal sanded that put coat of primer on sanded that put another coat of primer on wet sanded that then I did color and adjusted any issues with that and now I'm on to the stage right before clear coat let me take this other chassis out here. <laughs> I gotta put the other car part, uh, together again, but that we can do that later. I just wanted to show you how they come apart and stuff. So this is the Monaco, and actually, I'm gonna get one more piece. Couple more pieces. Couple more pieces. Excuse me. All right. So. This is what the body looks like when you the doors actually come off. Um, here's a painted door, and you just 
basically go in the body and, and take those screws out and this is what it looks like actually we'll use our demo car one more time it's the Plymouth you can see there's a screw here you just unscrew that the whole door comes off there's it is on upside down you can see in that area that gets the paint you work the paint because it's a wide screw sometimes a little crack on you but that's in the inside so came's out um, doors come out you can see the hole right in there like that and I haven't set the wheels and tires up on this car at all none of that stuff and so green light does paint their cars with the silver paint on the trim what I'm doing is actually putting real bare metal foil on this car and so it's gonna look a lot better it's gonna look a lot lot better so you just go around you know who, who knows you know if you don't know what it is it's kind of an old product actually but it's this stuff this is what it says in the back right and then this is a sheet of it it's very thin metal it has a sticky backing and it's really like leafing your car uh, you know if you've seen gold leaf how thin that is or any silver leaf when they're doing that it's a little bit thicker than that but it's still pliable it'll go around edges and corners and curves and all that it'll slightly give a bend if you're going around a curve you can kind of take a thin strip and just work it with your finger and just lay it down like that without having to stop and do another one but to do that um, it kind of wrinkles so I still kind of do strip come over here strip come over here and then I just take it off with a nice sharp blade I'm just go in there and just take it off what I did though I also did the trim on the bottom you can see and I got to polish it still it comes kind of dull but if you take a microfiber cloth and, and burnish it a little bit it'll it'll polish out and then what you do is because you can scratch it with your fingernail and all that that actually gets buried under the clear coat so once that once I get the car all done with all that trim then it's gonna get clear coated then polished and all that and then it'll look pretty good so we'll have the reveal in a few weeks I'm thinking I've had a lot of projects going on so kind of been slow <laughs> with that and then of course trying to do another Hot Wheels video um, got some premium Hot Wheels we're gonna do but anyway I digress how the car comes apart there's a few things right um, you have the front filler comes off the front as you can see we're gonna move this other Monaco out so that comes out like that pretty simple and you know for for instance you basically you're gonna go behind this car in there and you're gonna push out all those posts and the car you know that'll come off and actually green light really doesn't go too nuts on the on the glue you can almost do it with your hands it pulls right off see and you get the bumper exposed just like that and just pull it right out you get the idea front grill comes out like that too so basically you pull it off and it separates and you get a piece like this now one of the big things I've noticed on these Monaco's after doing a little bit more research on them is you'll notice that green light has this piece right here it's all chrome let me get that with my screwdriver so that's all chrome right there but really um, Chrysler put a, a color strip there so whatever color the car was this would have been the same so what I did was I took some masking some Tafina fine masking tape and I was able to replicate that on the one I'm doing so it's gonna look a lot more accurate as you can see there, there's a color stripe right down there the other thing I did because I again I left this stock so you could see what the difference is they they have this all black in here and I probably mentioned this in other videos this is all black it might have been darker from the factory maybe even dark black but when you see the car in real life after it's been driven even in some promo shots this is supposed to be more of a silver so what I did since green light applies this flat black there is chrome underneath all that take a little bit of acetone a little bit of nail polish remover whatever you got around put it on a q-tip put on a cloth whatever and lightly start rubbing and it'll start relief showing the relief of that grill Let's see if I can get a close-up on it there you go and 
you can see the dodge there I love that but basically this comes off as a piece let me do it real quick so you see the back side the posts you get the headlight posts and that so you just push on it just push on it comes out get this off real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about just push that you can actually use the table for it so it gives equal force see just push down those come out and that's how I was able to paint this part um, this is actually plastic that goes on there like that you can see it just goes on and that's how the car comes apart in the front and then the back is just one piece <laughs> it's just one big old piece so you look at it, and actually that's how the real car comes apart in the back it looks like that of course there would be more stuff in there but yeah, same thing same construction two posts two big old posts they come right out push from the back use something larger than the post to push through you know something like this pushing on it now if there's a lot of what's cool about this they don't melt them most people melt these and you gotta just cut them off and they come out they, they glue it and this glue is not like the strongest glue so you know just give it a little push it'll come out they do really good on their detailing here so not much I need to do clean up the black on there on the bumpers and that's it so that's where I'm up to. I'm going to be putting bare metal foil on the rest of this car. As you can see, I got started on the signal bulb here lens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that off. And then this is going to get Sharpie on it. And then it's going to get the clear coat over that. So the orange Sharpie is going to look like it's a lens instead of it being painted like this one. It'll look more like what's down here than over here. So that'll bring more realism to the car too. So with all the detailing I'm going to be doing to the car, um, it should look wonderful. The other thing I'm adding to that that's on the other ones is this police package car. So I'm going to do the bumper fillers in silver. Right now they're primered, but they're also going to get a coat of silver, and that'll look a little bit more accurate. The only thing I'm debating right now, and it's kind of hard to judge, but this car, if I put it up on spacers, I can raise the ride height slightly so I can look more like a heavy spring is on this car. And it's, I'm only talking like that much, and you can see how much I'm lifting. Just enough where it shows a little bit proud, and I think that I'm going to do that. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is pretty simple. Um, on these posts, they're all pretty much level to the chassis. You can see where they all have receiving areas. So I'm going to take the same idea I did for the axles in terms of enlarging them, or uh, getting the spacers, rather. I'm going to take the spacers. I'm going to make spacers that fit in that puck just like that out of that sheet plastic. And what's good about the sheet plastic is I have three different thicknesses. So I can stack them, I can use one, I can use the other. But they're all going to have the same amount of, because it's all level to the body. So same amount of space in each one. And it'll lift that body up just enough where we'll get the correct ride height. Because I think right now it's just a little low, just a little bit. And I think that'll help with the visual presentation of the vehicle. And make it look that much more accurate. So, a lot ahead of us. A lot ahead of us. But, something fun. And, again, thought you guys would enjoy it. Maybe. You know, some of the other stuff that we're doing here on the channel. So, till next time. More to come.